I'm Chris Watts, co-publisher of Future Banking. Now, the data centre sits at the very heart of modern banking. In fact, you could say that a bank is only as good as its data centre. This is why most banks are driving strategies to ensure that their data centre is operating at maximum efficiency. Now, in an era of increasing regulation, concerns for the environment and ensuring that a bank can attract and retain the best talent, most banks are reviewing their property portfolio sustainability. And as a consequence, many are moving from what has been a largely in-house data centre to a hybrid computing environment. So in this video, we're going to be looking at some of the challenges of data centre optimization. We're going to be talking to UBS and to Annixta, the international networking and communications company, looking at issues such as keeping mission critical applications up and running and eliminating downtime, how cabling can provide the essential building block for data center operations, and at exciting new concepts like the fat data center thin building. So UBS is uh, yeah, a wealth management company. Um, in, in terms of uh, you know, the core components, there are four business streams. There's our investment banking business, there's our wealth management business, asset management, and uh, our corporate center. My role uh, as a, uh, I live in core engineering, um, and I'm responsible for our global data center strategy um, and other attributes in terms of you know, mission critical uh, buildings. We have 20 plus data centers around the globe. Um, we have 100 sites that we would deem mission critical uh, that support the business. Uh, and then we focus around six global hubs, two in Europe, two in the Americas, and two across Asia. Annexter has always been an organisation that have um, tried to identify where we can inject value into, in, into the client. Uh, we, we do this in, uh, in, a, in a number of areas. The core thing is scaling the client globally for consistency. Uh, again, we focus a lot around uh, the technical design. We focus a lot around bundle services and supply chain services. Uh, and all this is done by best in class vendors and also best in class partners for specialization in the deployment of the, uh, of the solution. UBS is proud of the concept fat data center thin building, which describes its new HQ in London. Let's hear more about this. So here we are. Uh, this is UBS's new headquarter building in London. Um, so this building, by the way, is you know, circa 700,000 square foot. It comprises all our business units in this building. The principle of coming into this building, by the way, was fat data center thin building. So this building doesn't have any on-site data center facility. Uh, I think there's a number of buildings around London and you know, our peers, if you look at them on the basis of, you know, they've got uh, sort of cohabitation of both their people and their data. So we set out from the outset to separate people and data. As I said, this building has no on-site facility for hosting any application servers, any sand fabric. All we have on site is our local network connectivity. The, the data center was a critical path for us particularly around this facility and uh, ensuring that you know, all our back-end fabric is securely located uh, off-site to meet incidentally both our recovery objectives um, and satisfy our regulators uh, that we've got a, you know, a robust uh, and more importantly a deliberate uh, recovery um, practice from both an application perspective and also a people perspective. Well, of course, when you start bringing many applications and um, many services over a single infrastructure, uh, that starts to drive um, productivity from, uh, from an application perspective. For example, you need one infrastructure instead of three infrastructures. Uh, so you don't need the AV infrastructure because you're moving the AV infrastructure over the structured cabling infrastructure or the security infrastructure. So that convergence is putting less cables within into a building, which means less legacy. Uh, so 
as things progress and that cable over time becomes redundant, um, you've got less cables to rip out. From a green perspective, you, you start to see increased optimization and also, um, and also a better performance on the environment. However, there are challenges. So what are some of the challenges that data center optimization presents? So challenges are really around managing to the envelope of the data center. Uh, we have 100 sites globally. We have 20 sites which we would deem our data centers. And then we have six sites that are our core locations um, or our core hub locations. So that's uh, two in America, uh, two in Europe and two across Asia. And the challenges, of course, are you know, key is around um, legacy. Uh, so making sure that we retire legacy, uh, that we keep our environment fit for purpose. Um, and you know, agility, because with technology refresh, technolo technology lifecycle changes, um, ensuring that you know, we're, uh, we've got the environment to support uh, emerging technologies. It depends whether you're talking about um, office or data centers, because they're interrelated. Uh, lots of clients are looking at the, the thin office fat data center. So these two strategies blend, uh, blend together. So from a building perspective, uh, we are looking very much in convergence, which is convergence been around for, for a while, for a number of years, but there's more and more applications going across the same infrastructure. So a lot of the challenges is again coming back to interoperability because you're bringing many manufacturers together to make sure that you are delivering the performance uh, for productivity gains. When you move to the data center, uh, especially as clients are having a blend of own data centers and hosted data centers, one of the key things that, uh, uh, that the financial industry is looking for is consistent delivery across those data centers, making sure what, what they actually specified is being delivered in, the, in their outsourced data centers. Now, banks must, of course, ensure that mission-critical applications keep on transacting. So what are the leading causes of downtime and hardware damage? Downtime is, of course, an important uh, consideration for an organisation like ourselves. So you know, always on, always available um, is really the principle of, of uh, you know, financial technology. So to, to help reduce downtime with our vendor community, uh, we engage at the engineering level, uh, particularly around things like power supplies, location of power supplies. Um, we obviously, we're also very aware of our environmental impact. So your know, energy star ratings from, a, uh, from a, a purchasing perspective. So it depends what, uh, what perspective you're coming from. There's a number of areas where, um, uh, where the financial institute uh, can, can hit downtime. Uh, it depends whether you have uh, software issues or, or people hacking into, into the data center. One of the core areas that we believe is you've got to pre-design this data center in the right way, build resiliency into your data center, and then ultimately make sure that you have a thorough uh, management and maintenance program once you've actually once you've actually built the the DC banks must of course also enhance their green credentials so how should they go about reducing energy consumption for data center power and cooling you know this is a this is a challenge to any organization um, and incidentally uh, a positive challenge on the basis of we are seeing our footprint and dependency on power in our office buildings go down and as you'd expect because that workload is going into our data centers and we want to run our data centers at the most optimum level and therefore the higher uh, utilization uh, but with some overhead for, for the change etc we realize that then our PUEs are running at what would be near best in class uh, on the basis of running those sites efficiently. Let's now look at cabling and how cabling potentially could be the essential building block for data center optimization. In, in the concept of a fat data center, 
the, the cabling fabric has changed materially. Um, if we look back at the last generation of data centres and even you know, from 2000 era onwards, there was a, a high density of copper. Uh, in our new data centre design, which is again next generation uh, network fabric, etc., it's highly fibre based. Uh, so you know, the use of copper uh, is, is certainly uh, demised. The you know, IO densification itself, uh, from a compute perspective, is heavily fibre dependent. And what we realised was that uh, this required a complete redesign of how we historically consumed data centre resources, particularly cabling. Data centre optimization and how, uh, how cabling impacts that. As data centre demands increase or applications increase within the, within the data centre, uh, we're seeing speeds of uh, 2500 gig, which is being realised today with, in the very near future, 400 gig around the corner. Uh, this is based around, uh, around a fibre environment and the interesting thing about uh, fibre over, uh, over copper is per port, it's, uh, the wattage is, is actually less. So that's it to enhance data centre operations. This is Chris Watts of Future Banking. Thanks for watching.